The King's Avatar, Chapter 1351, A Brutal Six Rounds, audio source, WorsharWorldAudiobook.com. Chapter 1351, A Brutal Six Rounds. Translator, Nomiyami Editor, Nomiyami. With six rounds left in Season 10, the battle between the top eight suddenly became harsher. Originally, everyone had thought that 301's strength had allowed him to replace Wind Howl for good, and the top eight would be set like that. But out of nowhere, Wind Howl had suddenly resorted to the harsh method of fighting person to person, and they sang boldly and loudly as they marched through their team battles. After defeating Blue Rain in round 26, Wind Howl consecutively defeated 301, Misty Rain, Void, and 100 Blossoms. Weaklings. It looked like that designation was no longer accurate. But this new strategy of Wind Howl's had only appeared in the past few rounds. As to whether they could actually maintain this, everyone still held doubt. At the end of round 32, the commentator and honored guest expressed sympathy toward the match schedule that Hundred Blossoms was about to face. But when everyone thought about it, they realized that Wind Howl's upcoming match schedule wasn't easy either. Wind Howl's opponents in the final six rounds were Thunderclap, Royal Style, Heavenly Swords, Parade, Happy, and Tiny Herb. Among the six teams, three were in the top eight. Those wouldn't be easy fights. But the most demonic match schedule still had to be 301s. Their final six opponents were Miracle, Samsara, Tiny Herb, Blue Rain, Seaside, and Happy. This match schedule was enough to make one suffocate. Wind Howl only had to fight three of the top eight, but 301. They were basically fighting the top four. And between these two match schedules, there were two teams in common, Tiny Herb and Happy. Tiny Herb was currently in fourth place with 224 points, a 20-point difference from Wind Howl and 301. Their lead was relatively stable, but the situation wasn't as relaxed for Happy. They currently had 212 points, only 8 points AEAD of those two teams. If they slipped up during their confrontations with these two, then they could be dragged right down. Behind that, 100 Blossoms was still laying the top spots, and if they performed well, one good counter-attack could directly kick Happy out of the top 8. Happy's opponents in the last six rounds, aside from their direct competitors Wind Howl and 301, included Void, Lightly, Break Green, and Thunderclap. These opponents weren't weak either, especially Thunderclap, another team currently trapped in the mud hole. Currently, Thunderclap had slightly fewer points than Happy, only 211, and in the final six rounds they would be facing Wind Howl, Misty Rain, Happy, Hundred Blossoms, Samsara, Miracle. Another brutal match schedule. After analyzing the match schedules of the last six rounds, everyone was dumbfounded. Of the five teams currently embroiled in a battle for a spot in the playoffs, Happy. Thunderclap, Wind Howl, 301, and 100 Blossoms, not a single one had an easy schedule, and there were multiple matches where they would be going head-to-head. -head. Among the five teams, no one dared to predict right now which team would be kicked out of the top eight. After round 32, Happy's boss Chen found herself so anxious that she couldn't fall asleep. Originally, she'd thought that Happy already had a safe spot in the playoffs, but now at the end things had become so difficult and intense. Happy had actually played quite well in the past few rounds. After they'd begun to send up Luo Ji and Wei Chen, they might lose one or two points here and there, but wins of eight and nine points were still very pretty. Their one loss was their away game against Misty Rain, who'd beaten them 9-1. In an instant, the teams behind them had closed the distance. Perhaps it was true, that the other team's recent performances had simply been too excellent, too strong. In round 33, Happy played their away game against Void. 
Void was currently 28 points behind the top eight. Normally, they probably would have given up on the playoffs just like Misty Rain. But as of now, the current struggle for the top eight was a mud hole. Maybe there'd be a few teams that completely collapsed. Void didn't want to give up. But their upcoming match schedule was also worthy of tears. For the final six rounds of the season, they still had to play Happy, Hundred Blossoms, Radiant, Royal Style, Blue Rain, and Tyranny. But Void's dedicated fans had drafted an especially beautiful blueprint. According to the fans' plan, Void would use their home field advantage to take care of their direct competitors Happy and Hundred Blossoms. Then, they would get the points they could off of Radiant and Royal Style. By then, four rounds would be over and the leaderboard situation would be clearer. Even though Void would have to face Blue Rain and Tyranny, these two teams had stable spots in the playoffs, and they might even be resting up in preparation for the playoffs. Void might have an easier time getting points off of these two teams. This so-called Void's plan of counter-attack post-instantly became very popular. Some mocked it, but others voiced their support. After all, the analysis in the post wasn't without basis. Void's match schedule looked demonic, but the latter four matches might not be too bad to play. The same was true in general, if a team met one of the top four teams at the end of the season, it might not be a brutal match. It wasn't that the top four teams were going easy necessarily. It was simply logical to let the main players get a chance to rest after a full season of difficult matches and then use their full potential in the playoffs. So, rounds 33 and 34 became crucial. Void's dedicated fans had already pointed out the path for them, they couldn't fall here, could they? The team players were also chanting their slogans. These next two home games, they had to win, in order to see the dawn of entering the playoffs. The discussion, commentary, and analysis from all sides worried Chen Guo, especially after she saw that Happy's traring plans didn't undergo any special adjustment. She almost wanted to say, at such a crucial time, shouldn't they let Wei Chen and Luo Ji take a break? After all, entering the playoffs in the first place should be the priority. But judging from the rhythm of recent practices, Yi Zhu wasn't planning on changing the original arrangement. Should she say something to him? Chen Guo hesitated, because to express this at this point of time would be expressing her lack of faith toward those two. It was the reality that this old player and this new player were weaker in strength, but to prepare them for this crucial moment and then not use them, wouldn't that upset them? Did Yi Zhu anticipate this, and that was why he couldn't say anything? If those two could take the initiative to bring this up, that would be ideal. Chen Guo had no hope for someone as shameless as Wei Chen, but Luo Ji wasn't Wei Chen. Luo Ji understood his own level very clearly, as well as the current situation. In the meeting before round 33, when Yi Xu scheduled him to go on stage as normal, Luo Ji actually brought up this point, wondering if it would be more suitable to make an adjustment. What understanding? Chen Guo was moved. For the sake of the team, he didn't care about his individual gains or losses. What a good kid! Compared to him, Wei Chen was really an infuriating guy. But to Chen Guo's surprise, Yi Xu rejected Luo Ji's suggestion altogether. The current situation is critical, but the playoffs will only be even more so. If you hide from this now, then what will you do in the playoffs? Said Yi Xu. Um, Chen Guo wanted to say. We should at least ensure that we make playoffs first, but after opening her mouth, she restrained herself in the end. All this time, she had only listened from the side during these strategy meetings. Sometimes she would ask a question if something was unclear, but she never voiced an idea or suggestion. She knew exactly what level she was at, and she didn't want to become an idiotic backseat driver. 
This time, Chen Guo felt that this had nothing to do with strategy, it was just an attitude, and she had the right to say something. But just when the words were on her lips, she didn't know why, perhaps from habit or something else, she automatically swallowed him back. But it seemed like Yi Xiu knew what she wanted to say. He turned his head to glance at her, and said, WushaWorldAudio.com Our goal is to win the championships. We need the courage to face any situation. You too, Luo Ji. This kind of match is trying for you. After this round, be ready to play in the team battle. This is just a small stage. Relax, relax. Wei Chen said, with the confident air of a veteran. Chen Guo was speechless. But at least now she knew that Wei Chen wasn't truly shameless at this crucial time. He understood what choices Happy should make at this point. His and Luo Ji's going on stage now wasn't the typical trowing that teams would arrange for their rookies. This was also that they could be useful in the playoffs. That was why Happy hadn't sent them up from the very start for matches that would only waste their time. Happy sent them up now so they could have value on the field. Because they were about to face the playoffs, they need the courage and belief to take responsibility. I understand. Luo Ji was as anxious as ever, but he understood the rationale. Anxiety, nervousness, pressure. It was all right that he felt all this because sending him on stage now was so that he could get used to this sort of anxiety, nervousness, and pressure. There were still six rounds left. He should value these chances. How could he retreat? Send me on stage. Luo Ji mustered his determination, but his voice still trembled. He was truly terrified, terrified that he would lose one or two or even more points, and ultimately prevent Happy from entering the top eight. But he already demonstrated the determination to face difficulties head-on. He would overcome all of this. Good, Yi Xiu nodded. Then the plan is as it was before. Work hard, strive for this victory. Let's end Void's plan of counter-attack right here. Ha! Laughter in the meeting room. Evidently, they all had seen that recently trending post. The team that theoretically had the least chance of entering the top eight actually became the most attention-grabbing. It had to be said that people were miracle chases. They wanted to see the seemingly impossible become reality, that is, miracles. After the meeting ended, everyone split up to gather their belongings. In the afternoon, they would be flying to City X. Ye Zhu watched everyone leave one by one, but he himself headed toward Happy's R&D department. Guan Rongfei, along with the other R&D workers Happy had found, were all working frantically. Pseudo-silver equipment. This was what Yi Xu and the others ultimately decided to call their planned level 80 orange equipment. After all, any equipment that came out of the equipment editor would have its name in silver. But because its stats were purposely weaker and closer to those of orange equipment of the same level, everyone decided to call them pseudo-silver. Happy didn't have enough resources to create more level 75 silver equipment. Now, they were prepared to bolster their strength with pseudo-silver equipment. But pseudo-silver couldn't just be created on a whim either. The direct jump from level 70 to level 80 was possible in Guan Rongfei's research through accumulating materials. The myriad manifestations umbrella itself required a large amount of materials, but other equipment didn't. So, right now, they had to figure out how to change the blueprints so they could add more materials without ruining the stats of the equipment and ultimately push them to level 80. This was one of the hardest parts in investigating pseudo-silver equipment. It was proven that this was possible, so Happy was currently working on creating as many pseudo-silver equipment as they could. End chapter. The King's Avatar, Chapter 1352 A Map Suited to Phantom Demons, Audio Source, WushaWorldAudiobook.com 
Chapter 1352, a map suited to phantom demons. Translator, Nomiyami Editor, Nomiyami. The pseudo-silver equipment might have cost huge expenses in materials, but since they weren't trying to achieve the best possible stats, the requirements for the materials weren't quite as high. For orange equipment stats, even rare materials were rarely need. This solved a huge problem. After all, no matter high level or not, rare materials were limited in number and held great value. Yet now, with low requirements for rare materials, most of the other materials were easily obtainable from their guilds. Anything else they lacked weren't something they couldn't buy with a little money. 16 pieces. That was the answer Yi Zhu obtained when he came asking about it. They had already produced 16 pieces of pseudo-silver equipment. From nothing to this was impressive, terrifying even, progress. Thus, Happy decided to forego switching their new equipment in for now. May 1st, round 33 of the Pro League began. Though Void had drawn attention with their plan of counter-attack, however, this analysis made by attentive and hopeful fans was more anticipation than anything. In the round 33, it was clear that the match between Thunderclap and Wind Howl was the hottest topic, and it naturally became the match to be live broadcasted. However, none of the fans that came to the stadium cared about that. Banners, signs, they practically flooded Void's home stadium. For Void, this was like an early finals. If they lost, this season would end here for them. If they won, then they might still have a chance. Amidst the cheering, the players entered the stage, their accounts projected one after the other in the center of the stage. To Happy, Void's fans weren't all that friendly. For one, the match was crucial, and second, Happy had beaten Void 10-0 last time. The 10-0 and the 9-1 only had one point of difference, but they held two completely different meanings. A 10-0 was a flawless victory, a true sweep. It was equal to getting a perfect in a PK. The victorious side would be showered in glory and the losing side would be humiliated. No team's fans would be as naive as to not hate someone after such a humiliation. Team Happy's members settled in their seats amidst the ear-piercing jeers of the fans. However, they had already experienced over 30 matches, with over 10 of them away games. Happy's players wouldn't be scared by this. No matter how scary it was, it couldn't compare to tyranny. They had already experienced tyranny's home stadium. The pre-match preparations came to an end and soon the time for the match arrived. For Team Happy, Yi Zhu was sent out, as expected. As for Team Void, all the fans were curious as to who their team would send out to beat Yi Zhu and his 31 consecutive victories. But, Li Xuan, when the name appeared on the big screen, the entire stadium went into uproar. What was going on? Was it becoming fashionable for captains to challenge Yi Xu recently? Wind Howl's Tang Hao, Royal Styles Tian Sen, they had both done it, and now, their captain, the number one phantom demon, Li Xuan, had stepped up to the challenge, too. Good luck, captain. The stadium had erupted into cheering. Fielding their captain was a display of Void's courage and confidence. However, if he lost then that was sure to be a huge blow to their morale. Li Xuan's crying devil was a phantom demon, too, a class that was more on the supporting side. Yet, he had stepped up in this moment. The two entered their booths and their characters were loaded into the map. The match soon began. A phantom demon's map choice naturally wouldn't tilt the scales in Ye Zhu's favor. This map was a town with many alleyways, perfect for a phantom demon's ghost boundaries AOE effects and damage. Seeing the map, Yi Zhu naturally understood Li Xuan's intentions. Lord Grimm very uncharacteristically didn't head straight for the center of the map, instead choosing to move strategically. 
the two characters, one took the left path, the other took the right. Once they were at the center, they looked out and neither of them saw the other. Huh? How come you've switched playstyles today? Li Xuan asked in the public chat. In one-on-one -on -one matches, Yi Xu had maintained a simple and brutal style, charging right into the center, hunting down his target and beating them into a pulp. Your map choice is too much. If you left even a slight opening, you think I'd have to resort to this? Yi Xu replied. Li Xuan paused for a moment and then realized that Yi Xu wasn't just trash talking. For this map of choice, even the area at the center of the map was just the right size for Crying Devil to cover as a phantom demon. He really didn't leave any room for his opponent. Under these circumstances, his opponent definitely wouldn't be able to fight in such a straightforward manner anymore. Playing dirty was pretty much his only choice. Ha, huh. next time, next time. Even as Li Xuan wasted his breath with Yi Xu, he began to pay more attention to what was behind him. He had chosen this map and was naturally very familiar with it. It took but a moment for him to analyze the routes his opponent could take to get behind him. It was a one-on-one -on -one map, after all, so it wouldn't be very large. Its complexity was therefore also limited. Where would his opponent be? Just as Li Xuan was considering this, he heard the sound of cannon fire. Looking up, he saw a character fly into the air. Apart from Lord Grimm, who else could it be? The other wouldn't just stay in the alleyways and wait for death, so he jumped right onto the roof. This playstyle wasn't unexpected to Li Xuan. The alleyways were narrow. In comparison, the rooftops were much more wide and open. Lord Grimm turned this view on the rooftop. Li Xuan didn't make his presence known. In a direct confrontation, there was little chance his phantom demon would be able to take on the powerful and specialized. Thus, this match would rely on tactics. He had to find a chance and CC Lord Grimm for good. He couldn't let him escape. He had to take him down in one go. Thus, the first strike was critical. This strike may very well decide the entire battle. Li Xuan wouldn't act without 100% certainty. However, if he kept waiting like this, it wasn't like opportunity would just come to him. Li Xuan considered his options for a moment before letting Crying Devil stick his head up into Lord Grimm's field of vision for a moment. I see you. The message jumped out and light flashed. Lord Grimm was already launching attacks over at him. Anti-tank missiles, the three artillery shells shot over. It wasn't anything that could threaten him. Li Xuan easily had Crying Devil charge and dodge the attack, heading towards Lord Grimm. Yi Xu, naturally, wasn't afraid of close combat. Seeing his opponent approach him, it was exactly what he wanted. Lord Grimm didn't enter the alleyways, remoting on the rooftops as he approached. Bang, bang, bang. Currently, Lord Grimm was the only one who could attack. He shot normal attacks at Crying Devil as he leaped across the rooftops. These attacks were nothing significant, and it didn't matter even if Crying Devil didn't dodge. The two characters, after sneaking to the center, suddenly decided to show themselves one after the other and charge right at one another. Considering this, their earlier actions seemed completely wasteful. Finally, the two characters were mid-range from each other, and Lord Grimm gained more usable attack methods. WashourWorldAudio.com As for Crying Devil, his ghost boundaries were finally in range. However, face to face, there was no point in trying to unleash ghost boundaries. Ghost boundaries required casting. If they didn't control their distance and used them in a head-on confrontation, then it'd definitely be interrupted. Currently, Crying Devil and Lord Grimm were a little closer, and it didn't seem like the former had any chance to summon a ghost boundary. But that was when Crying Devil suddenly swerved and entered Lord Grimm's blind spot. 
However, Yi Xu was very experienced. Even just from this view, he could guess what the terrain was like in his blind spot. Standing above, his mind rapidly constructed the possible route crying devil had used the blind spot to take. However, he couldn't grasp the other's movement speed. Not being able to grasp the other's movement speed meant that he couldn't estimate his opponent's position. Even if he could calculate the routes his opponent might take, Yi Xu couldn't make a precise judgment. He really wasn't that familiar with this map, otherwise he'd be able to figure out where the other might attack from through sheer experience. Right now, Yi Xu could only use what was in front of him to make a vague judgment. There, Yi Xu glanced at a spot and immediately had Lord Grimm charge over. He still didn't come down, reamering on the rooftops. He would jump over what gaps he couldn't those he couldn't, he'd jump down then right back up. As he advanced, he continued to turn his view, looking out for any hints of crying devil. A figure suddenly flashed in his periphery. Yi Zhu immediately had Lord Grimm come to a stop. That position, that direction, it was off from Yi Zhu's prediction. Where was his opponent trying to go? He had yet to come to a conclusion when another figure suddenly flickered into view. How come he's come to this side now? Yi Zhu turned around, observing the two places crying devil appeared, unable to figure out his opponent's intentions. Was he just taking a longer route to hide his actual goal? Yi Zhu didn't think it was so simple. This seemed more like a trap, baiting him into investigating further. Thus, after Yi Zhu had Lord Grimm carefully take a good look at the surrounding terrain, he stopped moving. Li Xuan had crying devil run and run, popping out here and there. All this trouble, only to find that his opponent had stopped moving. Crying devil once again walked out of Lord Grimm's blind spot, giving the other a clear view. However, he only saw the other turn to look, not move. That's enough of that. You can stop. I'm not going over, Yi Xu said in the chat. If you don't come over, how are we going to fight? Li Xuan saw that his opponent was far too experienced and cunning. He was running around, but the other just watched him like some sort of circus monkey, not bothering to move. Thus, Li Xuan also gave up. You come over, Yi Xu suggested. No way, I can't fight you while you're over there like that. Li Xuan replied. Then give me a place you can fight in. We'll go over, Yi Zhu replied. I like where I am now. Then paired the thought. What about we roll die? We'll take the numbers we roll as coordinates and go over. Li Xuan suggested. Sure, you go first, Yi Xu said. Okay, Li Xuan agreed and then really did roll in the chat. 34. Li Xuan's number had been rolled. Your turn, he messaged. And so this time it was Lord Grimm rolling dice in the chat. 41. 34, 41. There, Li Xuan said. I was already moving when 34 was rolled. Haven't you realized I've disappeared? Ye Zhu replied. I've realized for a while now, Li Xuan said. Because I already knew you'd roll a 34. Ye Zhu said. I knew that you would know, Li Xuan said. Really? Then guess where I am now, Yi Xu said. Dot. Li Xuan didn't reply, because he had to keep his attention on his surroundings and not the chat. He knew that Lord Grimm had already approached Crying Devil. End chapter. The King's Avatar. Chapter 1353 A Battle of Awareness. Audio source. WushaWorldAudioBook.com Chapter 1353, A Battle of Awareness. Translator, Nomiyami Editor, Nomiyami. Cast. Without a trace of hesitation, crying devil's blade flickered. One shouldn't be fooled by the idle charting and banter in the public channel. In reality, the two of them were carefully controlling their characters while relying on their wealth of experiences to determine the other's actions. 
In the instant that Li Xuan had stopped chatting, he already knew that Lord Grimm was nearby, and without the slightest hesitation, crying devil called forth a ghost boundary. But halfway through the cast, Lord Grimm's figure suddenly flashed in front of him. So fast. Li Xuan was startled. This speed was a fair bit faster than what he'd predicted. With the cast halfway done, could he complete it? Bang. Lord Grimm opened fire, sending bullets precisely towards him. He couldn't complete it. Li Xuan made an accurate judgment in a split second, cancelling his previous ghost boundary cast. Crying Devil jumped to the side to avoid the gunfire as the silver weapon, four heavenly wheels, spun one round next to him, casting a shadow image. Shadow image was a ghost blade's protective skill. Within one minute, the player could activate it in any number of times to offset the damage that they took. In a head-on fight, especially against a veteran like Yi Xu, Li Xuan didn't make Crying Devil summon a ghost boundary, instead casting Shadow Image before immediately retreating. Lord Grimm had appeared at a speed which exceed his expectations, but if one were to say that moment had decided the difference between victory and defeat, it really wasn't so simple. Crying Devil retreated, and in just a few steps, he had already turned another corner. Without hesitation, he began to cast his ghost boundary once again. Crying Devil's cast speed was very fast. Li Xuan was confident that Lord Grimm had no way of once again appearing before him so quickly that he couldn't finish his cast. But this time, an explosion rang out. The wall in front of Crying Devil had been blown up by Lord Grimm's cannon fire. Immediately sending fragments flying inches away from Crying Devil, who was now worried that he wouldn't be able to get out unscathed. Interrupt. Before even being able to see Crying Devil's situation, Lord Grimm used such a method to indirectly interrupt his ghost boundary cast. The two of them were carefully analyzing each other. The back-and-forth combat so far had been completely reliant on their snap decisions and conjectures made from their awareness. Apart from the time when Lord Grimm had interrupted the cast with his guns, the two people hadn't seen each other's movements directly at all. This was purely a battle of awareness and experience. Retreat Li Xuan, who once again had his cast interrupted, had no choice but to retreat. Crying Devil continued to retreat frantically. On this map that Li Xuan chose, he didn't even need to look to know what the next street would look like. But before he could even retreat two steps, Li Xuan heard heard another gunshot before hearing the sound of rotor wing being used. Chasing from above, Li Xuan quickly raised his camera angle and adjusted Crying Devil's movement accordingly. In the end, what the audience saw instead was Lord Grimm using aerial fire, with the rotor wings only being used for hovering at a low elevation. Yi Xu was too crafty. The crowd was awed. Yi Xu had made use of the sound effect of the two skills, managing to cloud Li Xuan's judgment. In reality, he controlled Lord Grimm Chase on level ground at first before suddenly popping out from a corner and charging straight towards his opponent. As he had to defend from aerial attacks, Li Xuan had chosen to turn a different street corner. But at this time, he was suddenly face to face with Lord Grimm, who had charged straight over, creating an extremely awkward situation. Run. Upon seeing the distance between the two of them, Li Xuan knew that he had no time to cast his skills, and could only run away again to find a better position. But this time, it wasn't so easy for him to escape. Lord Grimm's various movement skills were put on full display, and in that instant, his explosive speed wasn't something that a ghost blade could compare to at all. His once far away opponent had very quickly begun to latch on to him. Li Xuan immediately realized that Lord Grimm's earlier burst of speed that had exceeded his expectations could really end up being the factor that decided victory and defeat. 
because of that one moment, he had been passive at every step, and Yi Xu had never given him the chance to summon his ghost boundaries again. And now, Yi Xu had already succeeded in latching on to him. In this battle, as the number one phantom demon, Crying Devil had surprisingly not laid down even a single ghost boundary. Wasn't this just too laughable? Earthquake Sword. Crying Devil suddenly turned his body, sending an earthquake sword towards Lord Grimm, who was chasing him from behind. Lord Grimm jumped lightly, dodging the attack. Moonlight Slash Full Moonlight Slash. The two skills slashed out in succession. Stop struggling. Quote. While controlling Lord Grimm to dodge, Yi Xu still had time to send this message in the global channel. Evidently, this attack really didn't pose much of a threat towards him. But at this time, Crying Devil unexpectedly started casting. Surprisingly, he was trying to forcefully summon a ghost boundary. In the end, Yi Xu completely ignored it, and Lord Grimm charged forth. The ghost boundary was summoned. Crying Devil had unexpectedly managed to summon a ghost boundary, but... Sword boundary. It raised the strength and intelligence of characters, but it didn't have any direct effect that restrained an opponent. At the same time as the sword boundary was completed, Lord Grimm's sword had already reached Crying Devil's head. You're too obsessive. Yi Xu sighed. Yeah, if I couldn't even lay down one ghost boundary, that would just be too outrageous. Li Xuan replied. The sword boundary that he laid down was the only ghost boundary he'd managed to cast the entire match, but it didn't have any real influence on the battle. Afterwards, Lord Grimm latched onto Crying Devil like glue, not giving him another opportunity until he finally fell. It looked as if Yi Xu had taken the first victory effortlessly, and it seemed as if the so-called first phantom demon didn't pose any real threat to him. Yet, real experts wouldn't have that kind of opinion. In this round, it had really been one move that decided victory or defeat. Now, because Lord Grimm had managed to latch onto Crying Devil, it looked as if he had effortlessly obtained victory. But if at the very first step, Crying Devil had managed to use ghost boundaries to restrain Lord Grimm, it could very well be that everyone would be watching Crying Devil effortlessly dispatch Lord Grimm. And the real factor that decided that one moment were the countless actions that the two sides had taken before that. The essence of the match was the decisions that the two had made without seeing their opponent at all, instead relying purely on their awareness and experience to make all kinds of judgments. But to most of the audience, a match like this, with no real head-to-head -head combat wasn't worth watching at all. Void's supporters in the stadium were evidently somewhat dissatisfied with Li Xuan's performance. But this was their captain, they call player, so everyone still gave him a bit more face. When Li Xuan stepped down from the stage, sparse clapping could still be heard from the crowd. But Void's so-called plan of counterattack really wasn't off to a good start, the very first point had already been lost. In a matter of minutes, Void's home stadium, which had originally been a flurry of excitement and energy now had a slightly depressed mood to it. At this stage, every single point was extremely valuable. Quite a few spectators were listening to the outcomes of other matches while watching the competition unfold in front of them. For Void to enter the playoffs, it was no longer purely dependent on their own effort. They also need to rely on the misfortune of other teams in order to snatch a place for themselves. As their first individual round finished, there was some news about the other matches going on at the same time. Team Wind Howl was already up 1-0 against Thunderclap, 100 Blossoms was up 1-0 against Misty Rain, and 301 was up 1-0 against Miracle. Everyone else was winning, only Void had lost this one point. Was there no hope left? Everyone silently watched the players go on stage for the second round of the individual competition, and rigid applause filled the air.
To the fans of Team Void, losing this one point was as bitter and painful as losing 10 points. Even if they saw that they had a better chance of winning in the second individual round, they still weren't able to drum up much enthusiasm. In the second round of the individual competition, Happy's Luo G was against Void's GEKG. Their ages weren't too far apart, and they could both be considered young in the glory circle. But where Luo G had only just begun to temper himself in real competitions, GEKG had already displayed the air of a general in the last season, cementing himself as an important member of Team Void. WashaWorldAudio.com GEKG very calmly entered the player booths, but what about Luo G? His facade of calmness was only to cover up the nervousness he felt in his heart. It really could be said that he had to summon all his courage to take up the responsibility of competing in this round. He had already begun feeling some anxiety in his heart from yesterday, and until now, it hadn't subsided at all. He didn't know when he would be able to get rid of these feelings of nervousness. All he knew was that upon understanding that Happy's situation was somewhat dire, his heart began jumping even more fiercely. It was a pity that the referee didn't care for such things. Upon seeing the two players enter the player booths and the characters loading in, the second round of the individual competition quickly began. The moment his character loaded in, Luo Ji promptly examined the map. Hamlet was a map with nice scenery, with red clouds floating in the horizon. In the middle of the map, there was a main street, and at the end of the street, he could see GEKG's blue exorcist already walking over steadily, at a pace that was neither fast nor slow. Luo Ji immediately controlled concealed light to take a roundabout route, hiding behind a straw house. He still didn't have any confidence when it came to taking on a professional player in a head-on fight, so he persisted with using tactics in every round. If he was playing a home game, with the ability to choose his map, things were a lot smoother, but in an away game, where he was faced with a map that he wasn't familiar with, it only made him more flustered. Unfortunately, this map happened to be one that Luo Ji wasn't familiar with. After temporarily having concealed light hide, Luo Ji momentarily had no clue as to what to do next. He controlled concealed light to sneakily stick out his head, taking a look at the main road, only to realize that Blue Exorcist had already disappeared. At this moment, Luo Ji had even less of a clue as to what to do next. Go out. Stay at his position and wait. Opponents that could fight directly and tactically created a lot of difficulties for Luo Ji. His calculation skills were not bad to begin with, but when his opponent had adopted a pace that was neither fast nor slow from the start, he had no way of determining how quickly his opponent would arrive. Now that his opponent had clearly opted to take a tactical approach, Luo Ji also had no way of figuring out which corner of the hamlet his opponent had hidden in. It seemed as if he could only rely on careful observation and thorough preparations now. Luo Ji started to line up his summons. He definitely wasn't a player that didn't use his brain. Seeing as he wasn't familiar with the entire map, then he would have to understand it one part at a time, and then use those parts to establish his battlefield, making full use of the map's features. Luo Ji controlled concealed light, quickly and carefully observing this corner of the map. His spirit cat was the first to be sent out, moving and hiding in an underbrush in front of him. Afterwards, the devil world flowers were planted behind a tree. From the direction that Blue Exorcist was coming from, it probably wouldn't be within his field of view. Afterwards, his young wyvern and thunder eagle split up and flew to the roofs of the straw houses to his left and right. Afterwards, Concealed Light himself holed up in the straw house on the left. The house didn't have a window, and Luo Ji's actions were as if he wanted to dig a hole for Concealed Light to hide in. 
Dot. The entire audience was stunned. Wasn't this supposed to be a fighting game? Why was it being played this way? End chapter.